Hey guys, my name is Steve and welcome to AEAC Vlog. If you're new around here, that's cool, me too. This is actually a sister channel to my primary YouTube channel, the Air Gun Exploration and Advancement Channel, otherwise known as AEAC Home. Over there, you will get full in-depth product reviews as well as around the world event coverage pertaining to everything air gun. But this channel here is my opportunity to get in front of you guys, slow things down a little bit, and bring you in on some learning, discovery, and approach as I get these products in and get them ready for their full review over on AEAC Home. But this here is the Caliber Gun Cricket Mini Carbine WST 22, and it's made in the Czech Republic, and this one came to me by way of Air Guns of Arizona. Now as a YouTube product reviewer, the industry will like to send me products that are of primary importance to them and what they believe you guys are gonna like. And then every once in a while, I get my say and they'll send me what I want them to send. And this is one of those such guns. And the reason I've requested it is because, first of all, I've, I've owned one of these. I've owned one of their bull pups for like five or six years. Now I purchased it from AOA when I was a retail customer and they had no idea of, of who I was and I've been thoroughly enjoying it all of this time and I sincerely feel in my heart of hearts that this is one of those great guns, one of those gems in the industry if you will, that, that the air gun community or a lot of the primary reviewers out there haven't really given a lot of attention. And I'd like to change that, and I hope you're okay with that, and I have a feeling, and I'm hoping that you will like it as much as I have, so I've requested to show it to you, review it for you, and, uh, and here we go. So I've, I've spent the last two days learning this gun, and there have definitely been some, some profound takeaways and some learning moments that I, I want to touch on before we pause, and you got to wait till next week when the review will probably come out, but when, when you look at this gun from the top down, the first thing you notice is that it's a hybrid, right? It's kind of like a bullpup and that the action's back here, but it's not so much like um, a bullpup because the action's not all the way back here and it's not so much like a rifle because you have this little teeny little stock and it's not so much like a carbine. So I think the industry likes to call them a hybrid and that makes good sense to me, but um, one of the things that really sticks out about this gun is it's only 31 inches long tip to tip. And as you guys know, air guns, some of them are like gigantic. They're like ridiculously gigantic and that's on the industry to somehow shrink the technology and keep it affordable and make it good for us. But that was really one of the first draws to this gun because I know it's important to you guys to always have smaller and lighter because we are carrying these things around in the woods and size and weight and comfort are of primary importance to us because not everyone likes to drill holes in their nice gun to add a sling or a bipod or what have you. And, and so when you pick this thing up, by the way, by itself it weighs 6.7 pounds. As you see it here, it weighs 8.7 pounds and that's with a tank filled with air. But when you pick this gun up, not only does it feel short, but it's nice and slender but there's no sharp edges anywhere on where you grab it. So it's an extremely comfortable hold. It's an extremely comfortable swing because it's got such a short pull. You know, I, I, there are a lot of us that are bullpup fans. I am a huge bullpup fan. I don't mind the cocking back here, but when you can take kind of that bullpup configuration, move the cocking more forward, you know, in the middle here, where you know where it's easier to get to, and still have only a 31 inch long gun that has a full size barrel in it so that you're getting full size performance. You know, to me that's a huge positive and, and it's definitely something that kind of clung to me over the last couple days as I've, as I've spent, uh, spent time with it. But um, there's another interesting sort of thing about this gun that's unusual and that's that it fills to 300 bar. Now, when I first heard that, I was like, okay, well, you know, our SCBA tanks, you know, the big 75 and 100 cubic foot tanks we carry around, you know, they're refillable to about 305 bar. So that tells me that if I own one of those big tanks, I can probably only top this off one or two times 
maybe three times. I haven't really experimented with that yet before I've maxed out the big tank. So I kind of thought to myself, well, you know, is that a good thing or is that a bad thing? You know, but, but then I started playing with it and then kind of the light bulb went off. You know, the bottle guns are really cool. I'm a huge advocate of the bottle guns. I like the way they look. I like the way they perform. I like the way they feel, but there's a lot of you I know because I read every single one of your comments that you leave over on AEAC Home in here too. And a lot of, and there's a common thread in there amongst y'all that says bottle guns are ugly. I don't like bottle guns. Well, you know, if that's you, this isn't that. It looks like a traditional carbine. So the cylinder is refillable to 300 bar. The way it refills is right up here on the nose end. You just, you pull this forward. It comes with a little teeny probe um, and you just slide it in here and you fill it. Now, this is actually not the probe that came with this gun. This is the probe that came with my Cricut Pup that I bought so long ago. And I just literally took it out of the closet, plugged it in here and it still worked great. And I think that says a lot for probes because like I know you guys are frustrated like I am sometimes because these are not always great, but sometimes they're great. And this one has definitely been amazing. So if that was a concern of yours, I wanted to pass it on. But here's the thing that kind of blew me away. Now, I, I knew that these were good. I knew the performance was good. I know that, that people liked them, but I don't know if everyone knows that on a single 300, on a single 300 bar fill, and I think this is a, only a 250 cc reservoir tank, guys. All right, now brace yourselves. I got 95 shots on the regulator. It's fully regulated, by the way. I got 95 shots on the regulator from 300 bar to 100 bar with a standard deviation of like 4.6 feet per second and, ex and an extreme spread of like 28 feet per second. And I saw that and I went, oh my God, that's the performance of really, really high-end high end guns. And when I say high, I mean like the most expensive you can buy in, in our industry. Now, if I took that 95 shots and I shrunk it to like 90 shots, well, now we're talking standard deviations of like two, three with extreme spreads of like 12, 15. And that honestly kind of blew me away and I was really excited to share that with you guys. You know, this is price point in this gun is $15.99. Um, you know, now I know you're thinking, well, you know, that's good, but you know, how much power does it make? Well, in 22, pushing an 18 grain pellet, it makes about 28 foot pounds energy at the muzzle. And to me, that's perfectly adequate. You know, that's pushing an 18 grain paint pellet to 837 ish average and that's pushing a 14 grain pellet to 887 ish average across those 90 shots and to me that's sweet spot territory so i i fully expect that this will perform out at 50 and 100 yards and we will get it there but in my at my house in my backyard yesterday when i was taking that crony string through the lab radar I put 95 shots in a in one hole at 25 yards, like the size of like the tip of my pinky. And so, and that was with the 18 green. So I'm thinking, okay, well the barrel's pretty damn happy, right? It's not giving me any flyers. Flyers, by the way, Caliber Gun uses CZ barrels in all of their guns, and that's a very high performing barrel. When I've played with them in the past, it tends to be a very forgiving barrel at 25 yards, meaning it'll eat happily a lot of different types of pellets. Um, I had very good luck with the JSB 16 grain, the JSB 18 grain. It liked these H&N Sniper lights. It did not like the Magnums. And here's kind of a nice takeaway. It liked Walmart ammunition. It really did quite well with these Craftsman Premier hollow points, um, but it didn't like the domes for some reason. Now that might just be a tin to tin variance and it may like the domes just fine if I grabbed into the tin, I don't know. It also liked the Air Arms 16 and 18 grain ammo and I'll get this out to 50 and 100 and the ones you'll see in that final video are gonna be the top one, two or three performers, performers here. But um, you know, just to kind of take you through the gun a little bit, it is shrouded and silenced. The uh, moderator just simply unscrews for cleaning. Just slide it right off. You can pull your patches through. 
Here's that CZ barrel. It stops right about here. So as you can see, it's a full length barrel. Um, I think Air Guns of Arizona told me they were gonna offer these in 22 and 25, but some of the other caliber guns you'll find on their website are available in 177 and even up to 30 cal. Uh, maybe down the road, we'll be able to have some more of those through the channel and hopefully they see this, get excited, and you guys start buying them and they start sending more here. And it's a continually rolling snowball and a victory for everybody. But um, the stock is, um, it's beach. It's like a walnut stained beach. It does have an adjustable cheek piece. It does have an adjustable butt pad. The butt pad goes up and down, not left and right only. Like I said, it's very narrow. It's very comfortable. It's very smooth in hand. One bolt right here, it pulls right off. You can access everything in here. The other neat, interesting takeaway about these caliber guns is Ernest Rowe, who is a tuning legend in our industry, who now works for FX USA, has like a five year history over on his YouTube channel of tuning these guns, tuning the regulator, tuning the triggers, dissecting them the whole nine yards. So if you wanna know more about that, hit up his channel. I've learned a lot there over the last five years and have definitely played with, um, with my 22 bullpup following his lead. Um, kind of speaking to that a, little, that a little bit, these guns, the adjustables are, the adjustables, <laughs> sorry, it's early guys. The regulators are adjustable, but you have to take the gun apart, you have to take the regulator out, and you have to take the regulator apart to adjust it. Um, but it can be done, it's some work. Uh, but the you can adjust the hammer spring tension externally. And you can see the little uh, screw right there, just clockwise increases hammer spring and tension. Counterclockwise decreases it, so you can experiment there a little bit, pretty, uh, a little bit pretty easily. Um, the triggers are really, really nice. Uh, they're dual stage. They're very adjustable. Um, they're certainly good enough for match work. Don't know how well you're going to be able to see this at home, but uh, there's a little manual safety right up here in the front, and there's the first stage. And the second stage break is like a little spongy. It's not that sharp glass breaking like you'll see on some of the FX's, the BSA's, the Day States, the Brocox, you know, these kind of guns, but it's damn good. And it's damn good, especially for a bullpup mechanism, which I'm pretty sure that's probably what's going on in here. Um, the pressure gauge, the manometer is right on the end there. Like I said, 300 bar to 100 bars, the working pressure, it kind of blows my mind that a regulator can work well in that window. So I don't know what caliber gun's doing differently, but they definitely seem to have uh, that dialed in. Now, uh, the gun will ship with two aluminum magazines. Um, super easy to load the magazine itself. I will say it's a little bit cumbersome trying to get the magazine into the gun. And that's because you go ahead and you, and you cock it like, like so, right? Let me get my safety on. Safety's on. So you cock it like so, and then, but you see you can't really slide the magazine in here because it's got this little probe sticking out. Well, you take this little lever on the side and you pull it, push it up, push it up, and pull it back. And now you can get the magazine in there, but at the same time I gotta make sure this is all the way back to get the tip of that probe. <clears throat> excuse me, out of there, and then you can slide it into place and uh, you're good to go. Now, this little doohickey here actually has two positions. It has one all the way to the rear, which is like a single shot mode in which it will not index the magazine as you cycle the gun and then you move it up, forward, and down, and it kind of notches it into that position where it will cycle the, uh, where it'll cycle the magazine for you. And I haven't really figured out the best way to, it's really easy to do on a bench. I can do it like very quickly and one-handedly on a bench, but to kind of do it while you're in the field, you kind of gotta, I think, hold the gun up like this, kind of pull that back, you know, and kind of hold it like this, and then you kind of let go of everything, and then there goes the magazine. Perfect example, right? So I'm not dissing the gun. These are fabulous guns, but you know, this is bringing you in on my learning <laughs> as I work my way towards a proper presentation of the product for y'all. These are the things I go through. So you put it in there and then you kind of got to have to move the magazine around. 
until it clicks into position, right? It clicks into position, then you put the, then you cycle it forward, and then you pick, you know, which one of these guys, which one of these slots you want to be in. So it can be done. Just be aware that there's a little bit of a process there, but um, outside of that, overall fit and finish is exemplary. Overall quality and feel is exemplary. And I think that I'm going to leave it right there and we'll wait for the rest over, um, over in the final video on AEAC Home. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, this video has enlightened you a little bit and made your day. And I hope to see you again real soon.